Hey guys, it's Andrew RBHA here bringing you a new video. So the great folks over at Best Joy sent me over one of their awesome new smart remotes to show you guys. Now this is the Best Joy Universal Remote, the SR001. It has tons of functionality. Uh, let's see, it does Bluetooth, it does uh, infrared, it's a learning remote so you can learn anything uh, that any of your other remotes are doing as well as it's a Wi-Fi capable so you'll be able to control things that way as well. So let's dive right in. Alright, so you can pick this thing up on Amazon's website for about 160 bucks. Not, not too bad uh, when you put it in the likes of like a Logitech Harmony remote or other smart remotes like that. They're usually pretty pricey for all the features and all the capabilities that they have. And we are also going to be looking at a MQTT hub uh, that will allow us to not only control all the other things that we just talked about, but will actually work with Home Assistant and the MQTT server to manage all those devices as well. So this remote could pretty much control anything that we want in our house. So let's get started. Okay, so we have two boxes to open up today. Uh, the first one is the remote itself. And then that smaller box here is the MQTT bridge or the M bridge as they call it. So this remote does uh, let's see, infrared, RF, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and then of course with the uh, MQTT bridge, it will pretty much do everything else as well. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but opening this box up here, right here on the top, we got the instructions uh, or like some sort of startup guide for how to get this thing all set up. We got the USB charge cable here because uh, this remote is rechargeable so we won't have to be changing batteries anymore so that'll be nice uh, we got the power brick for the charger and then of course we got the remote itself and it looks like there is another little manual here as well um, I guess the first one is the startup guide this is the actual manual but yeah the remote is pretty lightweight I was expecting it to be a, a little bit heavier than it actually is, so it's actually pretty light. I really like the design. I'm interested in seeing how this thing's uh, gonna work. Okay, let's see what's in the other box. Uh, let's see, in this box here, we got the power brick. Uh, we get the power core, which is your standard USB-C charger. And then you got the uh, M-Bridge itself. And on the bottom here, there's a QR code. I'm guessing that's uh, for getting this thing set up. Uh, but that's it as far as what all comes in these boxes. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step and we'll get this remote set up in the iClick app. Okay, so the app that this remote uses is the iClick app. Uh, you can find this in the App Store on your iPhone or Android. Uh, but once you have it downloaded uh, and you've set up your free account, uh, which is you know what's used to log into the app, you're ready to go. So for starters, we need to get this remote added to the app. Uh, so we'll click on Super Remote here. Now the model of remote that we have is the Ultimate, so we'll click on that. Now we need to put the remote in pairing mode. And it kind of explains how to do that here. But uh, once we have it in pairing mode, we're going to hit next. Uh, looks like we have to allow the app to access Bluetooth. And there it is. It can see the remote. So we'll click on that. It looks like we can assign a color to it. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call it living room since uh, that's where it'll be located. And that's kind of all the devices that will be uh, controlling you know, kind of in my living room. The 
but that's it. So if we click on it here, we can kind of manage it. Let's see if it needs a firmware update. Uh, looks like it does, so we'll let that complete. Uh, but that's it for getting the remote added into the app. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step, uh, and I'll go over uh, the various config and settings within the app. So everything is pretty much managed from the iClick app. Uh, so not only the remote and how it works, but also the devices that it will be communicating with. So just to try to run through the app here, uh, this is the device tab. This is where you'll add all of your devices as well as your remotes, uh, hubs, and even create activities and stuff. Let's see, there is an online service tab here. Not really sure what that does. The iHome tab is where all of your rooms are. So you can associate remotes and devices uh, to rooms that will make things easier to find within the app itself. Uh, these rooms here are all set up by default. Uh, I think you can go under the user settings and kind of manage those rooms if you wanted to and change them up. You can see here in the living room, I have a, a fan already added. I have my TV and my Apple TV, just to kind of show you how that works. The Axe tab, A-C-C-S, uh, it's kind of like their online store. Uh, so you can click on it and it usually has devices and stuff that you can purchase that will work with the remote. Uh, then lastly is the user tab, which has various settings related to your user account for the app. But if we go back to the device tab here, we can add a device. Uh, so if we wanted to add, say, an Xbox, uh, we'd click on games and then we could choose Xbox and then we would select that device and it will set it up with the remote. Now, maybe we want to add an Apple TV. Uh, so let's click on uh, TV box streaming. We're gonna choose our Apple TV. We'll select which remote we are gonna associate it with. And then we can kind of give it a name. I'll say uh, Apple TV and boom. As you can see, all the different buttons it has already set up based on the Apple TV remote. And if we back out of this here, we can go back to our devices. Uh, now we set this up in the bedroom. So if we look in there and you can see there is the Apple TV. The only other thing I wanted to do was kind of show you what settings you have within the remote itself. Uh, so this is where we updated the firmware earlier. But as you can see, you can also set the RF transmission range. Let's see, we can change the name of the remote if we wanted to. Uh, we can set it in power saving mode, which will allow it to last a little bit longer between charges. Probably a good idea. There's a few other things here. Let's see, default language. Uh, wake up sensitivity. You can also set automatic screen lock time, which is kind of cool as it will probably help with the battery usage as well. It also has the option to show battery indicator, which uh, will show that at the top, kind of like an iPhone. So I definitely want that enabled. But that's a quick overview of what's available in this iClick app. Uh, let's move on to the next step and we'll get things set up so this remote will work with our Home Assistant devices. All right, so first things first, uh, we need to get the M bridge, which is our MQTT bridge set up in the app. Uh, so we can go under devices here and if we click on add accessories uh, from there we need to scan the qr code that's on the bottom of that bridge and once we've done that we're ready uh, to start the configuration so it kind of gives you some instructions here on how to set this up uh, and this is also listed on the outside of the box uh, so no worries there but basically we're going to sync up the remote so that it's ready to go And you can see each of the uh, buttons have a number associated with them. This is going to be the payload that you're going to use with your MQTT commands. So 
So we need to get the Enbridge set up on our Wi-Fi network. Uh, it only does 2.4 gigahertz, so we need to make sure we have it configured on the right Wi-Fi. Uh, but we're gonna put in our MQTT broker information for the MQTT server. Oh, this will be the same server that we're using for Home Assistant, so make sure you have all that configured in Home Assistant as well. But now uh, we pretty much have it set up. We need to make note of our topics here uh, that we'll be using with the remote because we'll need this info uh, in Home Assistant. But the easiest way to set these up in Home Assistant is to basically create an automation that we'll use with a remote. Uh, so I already have one set up. Uh, so just kind of walk through how this automation is configured. I currently have three buttons configured on this remote for three different devices uh, in Home Assistant. And so I've created three trigger IDs, one for a window shade in my living room, one for my foyer light, and then one for my main living room lights. And you can see the MQTT topic listed there and each trigger ID has the payload for that button on the remote. But basically the automation is gonna listen on that topic and when uh, that payload or trigger ID is triggered, it will turn on the device. We got one for each of the lights and one for the window shade, but that's it. Uh, we can just keep adding uh, additional triggers to this automation uh, with the various payloads for each of the buttons on the remote and we're good to go. Pretty awesome, very easy to set up. Let's go ahead and move on to the last step and I'll show you how well it works. All right, for starters, I have uh, my TV set up here. And remember, this one is not set up through the Enbridge. This is just set up directly to the remote. Uh, just like any other universal remote would be. So uh, we can turn the TV on and off there. It's very responsive, works pretty well. Uh, the next one here is the window shade. And we did set this up with the Enbridge. And see the button is labeled the LR window there for living room window. We'll hit that and boom, it opens right up. And the same goes for my living room lights as well. So if I hit this top button here, which is the one I have configured for the light, it turns right on without any issue. This remote has endless possibilities when combined with the Enbridge and Home Assistant. So I mean, for 160 bucks, it may seem like a lot, but it's really an awesome deal when you think about all the stuff that it can do with it. I'll have a link to the remote in the description below. Head over there and check it out for yourself. I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. If you haven't had a chance, head over to my Spring Merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. And if you're looking for the latest smart home gear, you're going to want to check out Smonet. I'll have a link in the description below for their website. If you head over there, you can see what deals they're currently running. And if you're looking for the latest in smart window treatment, you're going to want to check out Smart Winds. I'll have a link in the description below for their website as well. Head over there and see what deals they currently have running. And if you're interested in buying and selling stock or maybe cryptocurrency, you're going to want to check out Robinhood. I'll have a link in the description below. If you sign up with that link, you and I both will get a free share of stock. It's a win-win for both of us. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around.